Espresso puck preparation is the hidden magic behind the best espresso shots you ever drink. And it's also one of the most overlooked things when it comes to home espresso. So in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of a lot of the different tools that you can use for puck preparation. And I'm also gonna tell you what my personal puck preparation process looks like. So before I even get into different puck preparation techniques or tools, I want to tell you why it's important. When you are making espresso, it's easy to look to your machine as a source of the problem. And that's not entirely wrong in a lot of cases. However, the part that most people admit is how you prepare your espresso puck before it ever touches the machine. I use a bottomless portafilter, which looks like this. It's the same as what you would normally get with an espresso machine, except for the bottom is cut off. I have a whole video on that, so if you wanna check out the differences between the two, you can check that video out right here. But basically what is going on is it's just giving you a window into the bottom of your espresso basket. If the espresso extraction is going well, it should look smooth and even, and if it is not going well, it will look uneven. You might even have some spurting going on and you will have some fast flow areas and some slow flow areas. And what that is caused by is something called channeling. And you can think of channeling very similar to erosion. Basically, when the water starts to go into the puck, um, it will find kind of a weak spot in the puck and it will work its way through there and it will start kind of burrowing faster and faster through that spot in the puck over extracting the coffee immediately surrounding that area and under extracting the rest. This ends up leaving you with a unbalanced and less enjoyable shot than a perfectly evenly extracted espresso would taste. Before we really get too far into it, if at any point through this video you have a question about something, drop it in the comments. And I'll also add that the opinions on espresso puck prep are about as varied as you can find on the internet when it comes to anything espresso. Some of these methods might work great for home and they might not be viable in a cafe. So depending on your setting, you may want to adapt some of the learnings and approaches that are gonna be in this video. If you've been shopping online at all, you are going to realize that you can pay an insane amount of money for an espresso grinder. And the reason for that is espresso grinders produce very fine grounds at very high consistency. If you have inconsistent grounds, that is going to allow for water to worm its way through different spots and create channeling, which you want to avoid. A very nice espresso grinder is going to produce a perfectly consistent puck, grind size, and allow you to achieve much better espresso. If you are using a blade grinder at home, like the blender style, you are gonna to wanna to use a pressurized basket because you are never going to get a great result with a non-pressurized basket. For espresso, you definitely need a burr style grinder and which grinder that is, you know, that's up to you. If you have a question about it, leave me a comment down below. The grinder is going to play as significant of a role, if not more significant of a role in your espresso quality than your espresso machine itself. So when it comes to preparing an espresso puck, what do most people do? Well, they take their grounds, put it in the portafilter, get their tamp, tamp it, and put it in the machine. First off, if you were just putting your grounds into your portafilter, they are likely not going to be very evenly distributed. It's likely gonna be clumped in some areas or heaped in the middle. And what that will result in is when you tamp, it's going to make for some high compacted areas of higher density where the water is not gonna to wanna to flow through those areas and it will be prone to channeling around those areas in other areas. So let's go over it from start to finish. I'll give you a brief overview of the tools and the different types, their benefits and drawbacks, and then I'll tell you what I do. So the first thing is your dosing cup. It's what goes under your grinder. If you have a nicer espresso grinder, you might be able to put your portafilter right into the grinder. Um, but many grinders, especially single dose grinders, will come with a dosing cup. And many of these tend to fit right in your portafilter, which is great. This one is the niche uh, dosing cup and it fits perfectly into your portafilter. Now the downside, as I said, is when you flip that over, um, your grounds, when you pull the cup out, will likely be clumped onto one side or the other, which is not what you want. You want an even distribution. So if you are using a dosing cup and you flip it and it's all heaped, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of take a little peek 
and then I'll give it a little shimmy until the grounds are a little bit more evenly distributed. Now the next thing that you will see a lot of people do, especially if you watch social media or whatever, is you will see these spinner type distributors. And in theory how they work is before you tamp, you put them on and you spin it around and these, this shape on the bottom will distribute the grounds evenly in your basket. Now, this is a cool and satisfying way to prepare your pucks, but I'm gonna give you a caution with these. There's been a lot of study done on these. You can deep dive it on the internet if you want. And it's been pretty widely shown that when you place this on your grounds, the shape of the distributor on the bottom will leave an impression in your grounds. Makes sense, right? The problem is when you go to distribute, it really only distributes the top layer and doesn't distribute the lower layers of the puck. So you can still get channeling and you might actually be tricking yourself a little bit into thinking you've well distributed your puck, but maybe in reality you haven't. So for those reasons, I don't tend to use or recommend these. Lots of people disagree with me. So if you do, feel free to come at me in the comments with your opinion. Like I said, there are a lot of different opinions on this, so feel free to drop yours below. If you do prepare a puck in this way, the next step is to tamp, which is pretty basic. You grab your tamper, this is the stock tamper from my Escasso Duo, and you tamp your beans. Okay, so before we get too much into tamps, I want to talk a little bit about WDT. Now, WDT, Weiss Distribution Technique, again, once I get the video, it'll be up here. Um, this is basically a method of stirring your grounds using one or several very fine needles or whatever. And in my opinion, this is a really great way to distribute coffee because it works its way down to the very deepest levels of the espresso puck. Also, it will help break up any clumps wherever they are and it shifts the beans around very subtly in a way that results in a very even and fluffy distribution. Now the flip side is you have this finicky tool that you really feel like you need to take care of. These are just acupuncture needles on here or equivalent. Um, and it's definitely not like something you can just toss in your drawer or the needles will get bent. There are a million different WDT, WDT tools on the market. I would encourage you to avoid any that have a kind of thicker needle or a hooked end on it. Um, those types will kind of tend to just push your grounds around rather than um, kind of break them up and distribute. This one, um, I'll link it below, is by S-Works Design, Sheldon Wong out in Cali. Um, this one was shipped to me by Normcore. Um, I actually removed the center needle and splayed out the needles on this one to help it distribute a little bit better. Again, I'll link these tools below. Then you have uh, tamps. The mistake most people make when they are tamping is they tamp way too hard. You want to use 30 pounds of pressure max. And if you wanna feel like what that is like, um, try it on a bathroom scale. Like it's kind of weird, but it will give you a sense of what 30 pounds of pressure actually is. Lots of people say you should actually go a lot lighter than 30 pounds of pressure. And depending on a lot of other factors, you know, obviously you gotta do what works for you, but I would say 30 pounds of pressure or under is definitely a good guideline. Something that hit the scene a number of years ago was oversized tampers. And if you are a home user, I would recommend picking one up. If you pull a lot of espresso, sometimes you'll see it forms a ring around the outside first. And that is actually channeling. It's coming through in a ring around the outside a little bit faster. Um, and that's what causes that. And so we want to avoid that. And if you use an oversized tamper, it will go closer to the edge of the basket. There'll be less play in there and that will actually give you a more even compression when you tamp. Most stock tampers tend to be 58 millimeters, but if you look, there is actually a little bit of play for a 58 millimeter tamper in a 58 millimeter basket. A 58.5 oversized tamper has a lot less wiggle room when you are placing it into the basket. A couple other things about tampers, you can get tampers with different types of surfaces on the bottom, convex, concave, or patterned. Um, and you can also get calibrated tampers, different types that will help you make sure that you put the right amount of pressure on. This one is by Normcore. I have one from Espro as well. Force Tamper makes a great one and there are plenty of other ones and that just makes it so that when you push down, there's a spring inside the handle that is basically going to make sure that however hard you push, only 30 pounds or however the spring is calibrated will actually compress 
the grounds. Also, a lot of tampers are coming out with a sleeve like this, which makes sure that you tamp straight, which prevents an oversized tamper in particular from binding up. And also, if you compress one side of the puck more than the other, that will result in channeling as well. You don't want to, you want to put tamp straight down. Okay, so that is a broad overview of the scope of puck preparation tools. Now, what do I do? I get this question all the time on social media and YouTube. What is my puck preparation process and what do I recommend? Well, I'm gonna tell you. I don't use these. So let's get rid of that. When I am doing WDT, I use the S-Works design, Sheldon Wong's WDT. You'll see this, a lot of people use it. It's expensive, but it is also high quality. The Normcore one, if you uh, modify it, can be good as well. I did use a paper clip for a long time, but now I tend to use a real tool for this. So I'll just move these out of the way. And when I tamp, I used an oversized tamper and the ones with the sleeve are really handy for helping you to tamp level every time. I also use a bottomless portafilter versus a spouted and a non-pressurized basket. Depending on which grinder I'm using, sometimes I will use either the niche dosing cup or I will grind right into the portafilter using the all ground. All right, so this feels a lot simpler and a lot more achievable. So why don't we prepare a puck and pull an espresso? So I've weighed out 18 grams of coffee. I've got it in my grinder and I'm gonna grind it up right into the portafilter. All right, once I have my ground coffee, I'll tend to even it out a little bit with my finger first. Then what I do is I take my WDT tool and I just stir it, doing these little spirograph motions and I'll slowly pull the WDT tool out, making the same motions. I'm careful to hold the port filter level while I'm doing this and then I tamp. Now again, this is a calibrated tamper so I can just push all the way down and it's going to put exactly the right amount of pressure on due to the spring. Is it worth learning to tamp properly? Absolutely. But if you're a home or novice user, a, a calibrated tamp can be very helpful. All right, let's pull a shot and see how it does. All right, so that was 36 grams in about 25 seconds, just about where I would like it. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, it's perfect. Mmm. Really good. Mmm. Well, that is absolutely delicious. I hope this video was helpful. If you have more questions, please drop them in on the comments and happy brewing.